Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so today's talk is uh, on object detection in a computer vision. So uh, the topic is a uh, requirement scale approximation for uh, object detection in uh, neural networks. And uh, for a general audience, what is uh, object detection? So basically, uh, given an image, you will uh, find or detect several objects within the image. Say uh, there is a bunch of people playing table te uh, playing uh, tennis here. So you have to find almost all the persons within this image and localize uh, which location they belong to. So for example, here uh, we localize this bounding box and we have to uh, decide which object class it belongs to. So in my opinion, uh, the object detection basically has two uh, problems to solve. The first one is where there is a, exists an object. And the second is uh, given the uh, bounding box, uh, which class does it belong to? So you can see the task is very simple, but the uh, problem to solve it is very difficult. As we can see, uh, for object detection, there are many uh, key issues. Uh, for example, the location thing. So the first one, the first question is uh, to solve uh, where the bounding box is within the image. So the solution is, um, the popular solution is dense or sparse sliding window in a fully convolutional manner. So basically it says you have to place many, uh, many uh, bounding boxes uh, within the uh, image in a dense or sparse way. And plus uh, an offset uh, regression scheme as refinement. So if you have the bounding box here shown as the blue box, you will uh, slightly refine the location of the box by regressing the uh, offsets. And the second question is uh, which object class does it belong to? Uh, this is to the, due to the variation or in appearance or texture or shape. So you guys can see that uh, within an image such as this image, you can see uh, the uh, for the single face detection problem, some faces in the image are very large and another one is uh, very small. So to tackle this one and also due to a different human, uh, human variety, some faces are yellow and others are white. So you have to tackle the problem variation in appearance and texture. But for now, uh, as we enter in the, into the deep learning era, so the uh, variance prop invariance property, meaning the, uh, the shape won't change after you extract features uh, into a deep, deep model. The invariance property from convolution or pooling operation, it will extract a key uh, features regardless of the location. So this means uh, the feature matters. So this problem can be effectively solved via the deep learning model. So how about the uh, scale variation? So currently there are a few popular modern detectors along the road. So first I will give a brief recap uh, about what's the uh, popular uh, detectors out there. The first one is uh, the almost the most important work before the deep learning time is a discriminative uh, train depart deformable parse model, uh, briefly shorted as DPM. It's pu uh, published uh, like six years ago, and uh, in a CPR conference, and uh, it basically extracts the hawk features and uh, uh, formulates the object detection problem as several region parts. So if you detect a bicycle, it will de detect the wheel first, and then the, uh, the main uh, backstone of the bicycle, and form the classifier, the results of several classifiers from different regions together. And uh, uh, after deep learning becomes very popular, we have the first uh, RCN method. It's called region-based uh, CN model. So basically, it replaces the features of previously handcrafted features like hog or sift uh, with deep learning model. So this paper is very simple. It's just uh, replace the original feature with the new deep learning ones and use the same SVM uh, classifier. And then we entered the, like two years ago, we have the fast RCN, faster RCN. It's published also in top tier conferences. And uh, I guess it's, uh, got very stars, tons of stars on 
GitHub because it's open source and it has really good performance. So basically, it will place many anchors, like I said earlier. It will place anchors in a dance form, uh, in a sliding window way, and uh, uh, gradually extract features of each location. And then, just uh, the last year, we have the uh, state of the art method. In my opinion, is uh, very also very popular. The first one is a single shot detector, uh, briefly as SSD, and also YOLO. We have uh, split the regular. Uh, split the image into regular spaces and also um, place many anchors into those uh, places. So the difference between SSD, YOLO, uh, from the uh, faster RCN or those kind of stuff is that they have the uh, region proposal and uh, classification, those two stages, if you are familiar with object detection. Uh, SSD for formulas those two stages into single one pipeline. And also, we have many other um, detectors like RFCN, so uh, I don't have space for them, but I just list uh, the most important ones along this pipeline. So today we have uh, our work uh, in <laughs> RSA for object detection in uh, CNs. So let's get started. Um, in this paper, we argue one more very simple thing is that the skill matters in the uh, detection pipeline. As you can see, those are the test results of our algorithm uh, on a popular face detection data set. So the, uh, the scale varies a lot uh, from those very large phases to these very small, tiny phases in the image. So how can we address that problem? Uh, for now, the current CN, due to the structure itself, it lacks an inherent mechanism to handle the uh, scale, uh, scale variation problem. So here are some prerequisites. Um, I will use those concepts gradually in the following talk, so make sure you guys are on the same page. Uh, so here is a, the uh, typical CN structure. Uh, we have the uh, convolution all the way down sampling to the very high level feature map. So the stride, if we have the initial stride of eight, and due to the uh, pooling or uh, stride bigger than two, uh, the spatial size of feature map here, the blue one, will be downsampled or will be smaller as the, uh, this gray, gray layer uh, indicates. So the stride will be larger because it downsampled twice, so the, uh, the, the, the the multiplication is four. And also we have the receptor field is uh, eight by eight. So uh, in the uh, deeper layers, we have 22 by 22. And the depth is, uh, is gradually deeper and deeper. So mapping the uh, feature map to image. So here we have an image. And this is a low level feature map because it has a uh, shorter stride. So it can catch the uh, smaller objects because in the uh, high-level feature map, we have two by two, and uh, the stride is very large, it's uh, 22, and it will move very, you know, very fast step, right? So the smaller objects cannot be detected. So in a short sentence, I want you, you to know that uh, high-level maps in deeper layers can detect larger objects due to a bigger stride. So that is to say, if we extract the uh, shallow layers, the spatial size is very large, right? Like this uh, figure shows here. The spatial size is very large, but it can only detect small scale objects. But in the higher layers, the spatial size of feature maps is very small, but it can detect uh, large objects, large scale objects. So for now, uh, for, for current works, uh, some address the scale problem via a multi-shot by single scale detector. So those are a little bit professional terms. Um, Multi-scale shot. Uh, Multi-shot means uh, we take multiple images in a uh, uh, detection pipeline. So you can understand shot as image, sort of. And uh, single scale detector means uh, for each image, we only extract one feature map at specific depth. 
So for example here, uh, so if you know a little bit about computer vision, you must uh, learn the concept of uh, image pyramid. So this is the largest image uh, here, shown as here. So if we down sample or up sample the image, it will form a set of uh, pyramids of different sizes. And for each image here, we extract uh, only one feature map at certain steps. So that means single scale detector. So in earlier stage, some work uh, such as Sermonet uh, in his or fit paper, they address the scale problem by downsampling or upsampling multiple times of the image and get various scale features. And uh, for now, the current uh, popular work like SSD or Yolo or our work zoom in and out network is another story. Uh, they use the uh, uh, single shot by multi scale detector. So this means the image only uh, is only forwarded once in the pipeline, and uh, you will utilize the feature maps at multiple depth in a network. So that means by multi scale. Multi scale means you extract feature maps in different depths of the network. Because, as I said earlier in the prerequisite, uh, the different depths can detect different sizes of objects. So in th this way, you can uh, understand one obvious advantage of such a solution. Uh, the image is only forwarded once, so the uh, computational cost is very low. And uh, I believe it, this still is the right direction of object detection but somewhat effective, but uh, it treats the scale problem as a black box. So um, our idea in this paper, I inspired by the following paper, is uh, proposed by Peaceful Dollar uh, in, I guess, um, three years ago. It's a faster pyramid, uh, feature pyramids for object detection, but actually to be precise, it's a pedestrian detection in their paper. So they argue, or they is observed in their paper that uh, image gradient, which is a property after you extract the uh, stats of the image, across all skills can be predicted based on natural image stati uh, statistics. So in, a, in simple English, it means um, if you extract features, uh, at that time the features means uh, handcrafted features. So you can predict the uh, high-level image properties like gradients across scales. It means across various scales. So that triggers us to think about why not predict feature maps across different scales. So based on this idea, we have our philosophy in this paper. So the co core idea is to, we want to calculate the feature map only once. Uh, this is to save computational costs, obviously. And the second one is uh, only through that pyramid can we ex approximate the rest feature pyramids. Because the ultimate goal is to, uh, to have feature maps uh, in various scales. But how do we obtain other scales? So if we have the first step ready, so we have uh, one feature map at a certain st step, can we approximate other scales based on step one? So um, the first step is for efficiency uh, consideration, and the second is for accuracy. So we have the pipeline here compared to previous uh, works. So our pipeline only contains single shot by single scale detector, which means the image is also forwarded once, like earlier works. But we also um, we didn't extract other features in uh, other layers in the network which is very different from these ones, okay? And uh, how about the other scales? We recurrently uh, approximate those feature maps. So here, middle or large, small, means the uh, object sizes that you can detect. So for the largest scale feature map, as I said earlier, it has a smaller stride, uh, which means it takes a smaller step from the uh, anchor mapping to the original image. So it can uh, identify small objects. 
And for the smallest feature map, because it has a larger strength, it can detect larger objects. So some may argue that, like the in the original RPN method, uh, RPN, I mean the faster RPN paper, they all put the uh, anchors into the highest uh, layers to simultaneously detect large or uh, small objects. That is okay. But if you want to improve performance, because you must uh, miss some small objects, especially for Coco data set, you have lots of very scale objects. You have to find those details in the shallow layers. So our pipeline is shortly brief, briefed as a single shot by single scale detector with the uh, name as a recurring scale approximation. So I will give you a rough idea of the whole pipeline of our method, and I will dig into the details later. So uh, the whole pipeline consists of three components. The first one is a scale forecast network. So uh, what I have said earlier is all about the green one. It's the second part, RIC unit. Uh, the motivation, the philosophy, and the uh, other alternatives is all about the uh, RIC unit. But the uh, yellow and blue ones are the new components to, um, to enhance the uh, efficiency and the accuracy. So the first one is a scale forecast network. So given an image, we will predict the potential scales from the scale forecast network. So in this image, the man holding a baby, it consists of two phases, and it has two scales. And we will predict, train, train a uh, some network to predict the potential scales uh, using this network. And the second one is a RSU, RSA unit. Uh, the image is resized to uh, certain, certain scales, and uh, the other smaller uh, feature maps will be predicted directly through this unit. And the last one is uh, exclu exclusively for face detection, uh, but the uh, focus today is on object detection, so I will uh, briefly introduce that part uh, later. So the rest of the talk offline is uh, algorithm, um, by two, three steps, and then I will introduce the uh, experiments. So the first one, scale forecast network, uh, basically it predicts potential scales in an image. So um, first, the uh, network overview. So it's nothing, nothing fancy, fancy here. It's basically a ResNet simple model. It's a uh, 18 layer, uh, ResNet 18 model, if I remember correctly. So basically it forwarded a series of convolutions and give a uh, global pooling. So why global pooling here? Uh, because we have a one-dimensional indicator here, right? Uh, because after the convolution, we will have a squared size map, right? So the spatial, uh, the global pooling will extract the, uh, if you take maximum, it will take the maximum size uh, within the spatial size and uh, transfer the 2D into 1D. Yeah, that's the basic reason. Um, so define the beam index here because we want to predict which uh, scale it belongs to, which phases it belongs to. So we uh, di discriminate the uh, scale space into uh, several beams. Basically, it has 16 beams. So x here is a phase size. If the phase size is 16, and uh, it's nothing fancy here. It's just uh, convert the arbitrary size x into the um, 0 to 16 b here. And there are some details like you have to resize the image uh, into the longer dim uh, 2000, but I will skip, skip those kind of stuff. And also uh, the one million dollar question is uh, the loss of scale forecast network. So it's just a binary multi-class uh, cross-entropy loss. So um, uh, given the base index of the uh, scale, and uh, here is a probability of uh, how likely it, it will occur this kind of scale. And uh, this is a revert one about how unlikely it will appear in the image. And you will sum all those cases to together and form a loss. It's um, nothing new here. But one thing to point out is that how 
to determine multiple predictions or scales. Because in most cases, uh, in an image, you will have different phases scales. And how do you decide the threshold, as, uh, which will be shown later in the uh, experiments? Because we find through experiments that, that um, two is very proper for detecting the scales. Um, I will show you the results later. But another thing is that why not use NMS to find local maximum? Uh, if you are familiar with the detection or other basic vision tasks, you must know NMS, the non-maximum suppression. That will find local maximum given the uh, high overlapping score uh, compared to the preceding boxes. But here, this is a 1D case. We cannot say that the uh, second local mi minimum um, can be suppressed simply because it has a uh, large overlap with a former uh, scale. Because those scales or beans, they are exclusive from each other, right? So this is a reason. Uh, the, the, the second component is a recurrent scale approximate unit, which is uh, the core of our algorithm. It predicts feature maps of larger scale objects based on the smaller ones. So here is an illustration. So given the uh, image here, we denote as I0, and through a kind of uh, convolutions, we have these feature maps, and uh, denote as F0, and we forward the feature map into RSA. RSA is just uh, the name we gave it to the algorithm. And uh, one thing is that the RSA is just a, a series of convolutions, but in some convolutions, it has right to meaning it will downsample the input size into the half size of the input. So if you forward once, uh, F1 here is the spatial size is just the half of the original input. And here, because this is a supervised learning way, right? We have to make or obtain or whatever you call it, make some ground truth annotations. So how do we make annotations? Uh, because as we showed earlier, uh, later, there's a loss here because this is the predictions of the RSA unit and uh, we have to provide some annotations. So how can we make the, these ground truth annotations? Um, so in this way, we think of a solution which is to downsample the image into half size of the original and also forward the same convolution up here. So the pointer here, the blue one, convolution, shares the same parameter, obviously, with that one. So here, the ground truth on the first level, level one, uh, so it's generated like this one. So you can imagine that uh, if you roll out multiple times, uh, if you forward the output of F1 into another essay, it's that's, that's the reason why we call recurrent. It's basically uh, the input of the current unit is the output of the preceding uh, output, right? So we can get the uh, G2, G3, etc. And uh, the orange box shows a uh, uh, mean square loss. So we have, if we do the uh, element-wise comparison, with the ground truth, the so-called ground truth um, feature map with the prediction, we can see that the uh, error is uh, within our tolerance. Okay, so uh, during the test, we will discard it, all those ground truth maps. And for the inference procedure, we will first have the uh, initial uh, feature map here as this one. And uh, based on the outputs of the uh, scale forecast network, which means if the former network predict the image will have uh, scale one and scale four uh, phases, so the RSA unit will first be forwarded once and then roll out three times to get the uh, F4. So I hope you won't get lost. It's basically very simple. Um, and define the output map prediction of RSA. Um, it's just, uh, like I said earlier, 
So the output here, shown HM, is forwarded through a various uh, convolutions. Here I just uh, write in a very brief way, just uh, denote as RSA. It's just a, a series of convolutions. And for the loss, it's very simple. It's uh, the L2 norm uh, between the prediction and the supervision across all scales. The scales means the bigger uh, superscript M here, M equals to six, because we think, well, we find in the experiments, if you divide the bins into uh, 60s, uh, it will t be too many. So we group the 60s into six main meta bins, which means if uh, the scale predicted earlier is six, it will belong to this. The first, if it, the bin predicts like 24, it will belong to the third one. Okay. Okay, so here are some discussion here. Uh, as you can see, by designing, we can by design we uh, accidentally have fewer parameters than one alternative, which is to resizing the image and obtain maps on a smaller scale. Uh, this means like this. So some may argue that why not you design directly the like the uh, facial pyramid uh, solution. Uh, it's just uh, the first solution. Remember, I we provide two alternatives. Earlier is the uh, multi-shot uh, single scale solution. Why not do you uh, introduce or imply that kind of solution? Because it will use more convolutional networks, aka more parameters in your model. Um, so here is the first point. Another is uh, RSA with the relationship to RPN. So assuming you are very familiar with RPN, the difference is RPN feeds the whole image of various scales throughout the very first layer to the very last layer. Uh, as, just, uh, as, as I said earlier, it plays all anchors of different sizes on, in the final uh, feature layer. And uh, this is improper for detecting different scales of uh, objects. And the second one is uh, we resize image only once and to make sure at least one face falls into the bin. This is um, technically not a novelty, it's just uh, some training trick to make sure during e each mini batch uh, we will resize as to the extent that we will always have the uh, positive sample. So the multi scale spirit is embedded in the uh, RSA unit. So if you want to acquire different scales, you will grow out uh, RSA unit multiple times. Uh, so the last one is landmark retracing network. Um, it will retrace the location of regressed landmarks to improve face detection accuracy. So it's not technically related to object detection. So I will give you a rough idea on what's going on there. And uh, I won't list many mathematical forms. So here we have the uh, final RPN layer. If you do face uh, detection, you will probably be familiar with those kind of stuff. It's called the uh, detection by landmark method, probably proposed last year in ECCV, something like this. So in the last uh, RPN layer, you have the uh, uh, landmark. Here, landmark means key points, like nose or mouse or left size of your face, what, whatever you name it. So, uh, in traditional ones, we have the classification scores uh, uh, in the final layer. But how about we will regress those kind of uh, landmarks locations and extract the features in the preceding layers, in the shallow layers, or in some layers before the final classification layers. And through experiments, we find that will rectify the confidence store of landmarks. So say here we have some original LFW, uh, AFW uh, is almost 100%. And uh, on mouth is almost uh, already over uh, 95. So this indicates that we only need to generate less than two predictions per image. So um, we set the threshold as to it will only uh, generate two proportional scales because we observe it through experiments. 
Uh, the second one, so where do we plug the RSA unit in a network? So here, the, uh, the right bottom corner here is a green and blue one. So the image will be forwarded through the um, downside stream of the network. So here, RSA is plugged into the uh, REST 2A. How about the other layer or the other depths of the network? So through experiments, uh, different colors indicates different depth or location in, within a network. So as you guys can see, um, like the pink curve, if we place the uh, RC unit in the very first convolutional one layer, and uh, the y-axis indicates the error rate. The error rate means the uh, accumulated error with, with the uh, prediction and ground truth annotations. So you can have a very high error. But if you uh, place uh, deeper and deeper, like the uh, blue one here, REST 3C, uh, it also has a very high uh, error rate. So through experiments, we decide to place here, as I pointer goes here, we'll place the uh, RSC unit around the upper shallow location of the network. It's a REST 2A. Um, this, there is no obvious theoretical reason as to why we put this uh, in the network. It's just uh, through the uh, findings. So this is a uh, first observation, feature depth matters. The second is a uh, butterfly effect exists, which means uh, for a single curve, let's say the blue one, as the, uh, you can see, as the x axis indicates the RSA downsample ratio, which means uh, if we roll out multiple times RSA here, so we have the uh, uh, F0 is zero because it's just uh, basically the original ground truth of the first level, right? And if we go deeper and deeper, roll out multiple times, the accumulation, the arrow will definitely go bigger and bigger because uh, the later ones are based on the gas of the preceding layers, right? Um, so based on those two observations, we decide to choose layer REST 2A as the uh, branch out head of RSA unit. And uh, the second, uh, the third ablative uh, study is uh, our algorithm comparison to the uh, basic RPN. So it's a little dazzling here. Um, it, it, you can just uh, focus on the red boxes. So the pipeline, total pipeline of our algorithm, because as I said earlier, um, the RSA, it only contains three or two, four convolutions. So the parameters it has is very few compared to 1.7 mega uh, gigabyte uh, RPM method. And also it has a higher recall in phase uh, detection. So specifically for phase detection, we have the uh, visual results. Um, as you guys can see, this is uh, the first row is the basic RPN, and uh, the red axis is uh, a little bit small here. Uh, so RPN cannot detect a small, very small phases uh, due to the uh, its internal design, which place all the scales anchors into the final layer. Uh, we can see the uh, yellow ones, it missed many small scale phases. And the last one is the uh, final version of our uh, method is LRM plus RSA. Uh, we can see the uh, all, almost all the phases can be retrieved, retrieved. But all methods share a common uh, false positive, which is that one, the image uh, in the corner, the face in the corner. It's a fake image, but that's a, another story to detect a fake image, a fake, fake face. And here are some quantitative analysis uh, on multiple data sets. But the uh, conclusion is that the multiple anchor um, RPN method cannot handle uh, extreme skill barriers like those small faces. And uh, it produces many false positives. And our method can not only uh, accelerate the speed of LRN because 
the fewer parameters it has in the RSA unit. And also, it reduced false positive by deposing of the uh, patches on invalid skills, which means a uh, uh, retracing scheme in the LRN network can uh, rectify the confidence score. Okay? And the last one is uh, for generic object detection. So for now, it's still a preliminary version. Uh, it's still underway. We only have some uh, recall on the ImageNet. And we can see for the proposal under 300 boxes, uh, the original RPN has uh, 93, and we got slightly better, it's uh, 94. And for the speed, uh, we have uh, 120, and we got 150 milliseconds per image. And so the takeaway message is uh, skill matters in computer vision. I think all kind of stuff in computer vision deals with the skill problem. You must uh, have your own solution in your own task. And to, hand, to uh, address the skill problem, we propose our core idea is RSA unit. As you can see, it can be plugged into face detection, object detection, or other pedestrian or whatever method. So you guys can definitely have a try. Um, the skill forecast network is to ensure no redundant skill will be completed. Uh, that kind of part is proposal for uh, efficiency, computational cost consideration. And RSA is learned end to end. So combined with several uh, components, our method considers both efficiency and accuracy. So you can have a try as the RSA and landmark retracing. I guess uh, you can, uh, as for the landmark retracing, you can have a try. Um, it's similar like the pyramid feature network proposed by uh, <coughs> T.Y. Lin. And so basically it will utilize the shallow features of shallow layers. But how do you utilize uh, whether or not you will use the uh, landmarks of the final layer to rectify the uh, confidence or, or other ways, that's your pipeline. But the spirit is the same, is to utilize, fully utilize uh, all kind of information in uh, shallow layers. So uh, through this talk, you can have the paper code size uh, online, uh, do trial method, and uh, so, that's basically all the stuff I told. So if you have any questions, you can listen.